everyone and welcome to this video in this one we are going to try something very new in c plus plus and it is c plus plus 20 modules modules are an attempt to change the way things have been done in c plus plus for a long time where we declared headers to contain declarations of objects or entities in a c plus plus program Headers are processed by the C++ preprocessor and they may be included in multiple files causing your binary size to blow up, something that C++ 20 modules try to address. If you want to learn about modules, please read this documentation at CPP reference. But I also have a chapter in my C++ 20 masterclass that is going to go into the details and really guide you through every step of getting started using modules with C++20. But in this video, we will update the projects that we did earlier and get it to use modules and show you how you can use modules in uh, a CMake project and really be at the forefront of how things are happening in C++ if you want to try this out. Now, I have to say that CMake has basic support for C++ 20 modules, and you can read about them in the CMake documentation here. And uh, modules are supported in MSVC, LLVM, Clang, and GCC, but they don't work easily with GCC 14, and I am not going to show you that here. I will just show you that you can compile code with MSVC and LLVM Clang using CMake. If you want modules support with CMake, you have no choice but to use CMake 328 at least because of this is the CMake version in which this was introduced. And there is a good blog post by the developers of CMake showing you how you can use this and they give more background information on the modules and CMake. And this is a good read if you are interested in this subject. I am going to share all these links in the video description below. Now let's hop over to our project and show you how we can integrate CMake and C20 modules. This is a fairly simple CMake project with a simple main CPP file, which is going to be using things that are coming from our module file. The module file that we are using here has the IXX extension. You can see it here. And to understand what is happening here, I do recommend reading up on modules, but I am going to give you the gist of it. To declare a module, you have to start the file with module semicolon. This is a thing that is going to be used by both systems to know that this is a module file. And you say export module and specify the name of the module. This is the name of our module here. And we will be importing this module using the name that we declare here. So we will be saying import calculator to import things that are declared in this module. If you want something to be visible to the outside, you put the export keyword. So this calculator class is going to be exported for use by people who import our module here. And this is a regular C++ class which has a few methods that we can use. Once we have the module, we have to make sure that it is picked up and processed by our CMake list.txt file. And uh, if you look at the CMake list.txt file, it is nothing you haven't seen. Here we are pulling our dependency, which is the FMT library, but this is what is important here. Your module files will be brought in to be part of a library in CMake. So here we are using the add library command to set up a calculator library. This is going to be the name of the library. And you add any module files that you have to be part of this library here. We do that using the target process command in CMake. We specify the library we want these things to be part of. I am not going to try and explain this public keyword. If you are interested in it, please look at the CMake series. I explain these things in detail. And then you specify the type of file that you are putting in this library here. And this CXX modules means that these are going to be C20 module files. And we put in this calculator thing here. If you have any other module, for example, a math module, you may say math, I, X, X, something like this. You can keep adding module files if you need that, but we don't need that in this case here because we only have one module file. Once you have the library declared, 
You will need to link to this library if you have any other target that is using this library. So this is what we are doing here. We are setting up our executable, but we want this executable to link against this calculator library so that things in main.cpp can use things from a calculator, if that is making any sense. So if we go back in main.cpp, you see that we are saying import calculator. So this is going to be using things from our calculator module. This is going to work because we have linked against the calculator library from the target that the main C++ file is part of, if that is making any sense. Again, if you need more details on this, I recommend reading up on this blog post from the developers of CMake. It is probably going to make things easier. If you need a fresh step-by-step -step workthrough on how modules work, please watch my chapter in this C++20 masterclass. For now, I am just going to try and compile this project. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the CMake preset file that we have here because I have modified it to make sure it uses tools that support C++20 modules. For example, if we look at our base configure preset, it is going to be using the Ninja Build system. But I made sure that on Windows, we use the Visual Studio generator. You see, I have specified it here. And to see what generators you have available to you, you can go to the terminal and say CMake help. And you will have a list of these. I used the latest Visual Studio version I have installed here. So let's go up and make sure you can see it. You see, we have Visual Studio 17 2022. This is what I used here. So this is a generator that supports C++ 20 modules. Again, how do I know that? I read the documentation in CMake. If we go down here, you see they say generator support. And we have the list of generators which support scanning sources for C++ modules. And we have Ninja and Visual Studio 17 2022. And it is what we are using with the MSVC compiler here. I want this to be very clear. On Windows, we also have Clang 16 installed, if it is not 17. And you see that Clang 16 or newer supports C++ 20 modules. GCC also supports modules, but you have to build it yourself. And I don't want to take you through that trouble here. We are just going to be happy with using MSVC and LLVM Clang. So here we have Windows support for Clang, and we will be using the Clang compiler. The Clang compiler is going to be using the Ninja generator that we have here. And the Clang configuration is going to be inheriting this Ninja generator from the base configuration here. You see that it inherits from base. This is something I want you to see. On Mac, I don't have access on the Mac, so I can't really try this. But on Linux, I also made sure I have an installation of Clang 17. And this is what I wanted to use to build my project here, to have a good support for modules. If you try to build this on Linux, make sure you have Ninja installed because it is required. And I think it requires Ninja 1.11 or upper. So if you have an old version of Ninja, that's not going to work for you. For now, we can just try to build the project with uh, whatever compiler is supported. We are going to be using presets because presets are making it easy to really tune the tools that we want our project to be built with. So let's do that. We can go to the build directory and clean it up if it contains a few things that we don't want. So let's uh, close Visual Studio Code first and delete. And we are going to open Visual Studio again. Visual Studio Code, I mean, and we can set up a preset. So view command palette and select a configure preset. We will be using Windows base by default. So let's use that. We also want to select the build preset. So let's select the build preset. How do we do that? Select, we can search here, a build preset. And we are going to select Windows build. And now you see that the configuration is done. The build files have been generated in this build folder here. You can hit the build button to build. It is really the same thing you've seen before, 
once you know what to do in your CMake list.txt file, that you have to set up a library which is going to be englobing your module files. The build is good, so we can run the application. If you run it, it is going to do whatever it does. It is going to print something here, and it is working. You can also debug the application because I really want you to see that. So let's put a breakpoint on line 22 here, and we can hit our debug icon. The binary is going to be built. Uh, it is going to be plugged into the debugger, and we have hit our breakpoint here. We can do whatever we do to debug our application, which is using C++ 20 modules with CMake. This is really cool. If you want to get the code for this project, make sure to check out the Git repository that I am going to link in the description below. Now we can stop our debugging and try to use another compiler because we can. So let's choose another preset for configuration. Let's use Windows Clang this time and see how this goes. You see, it is going to be using Clan 16 and uh, it is going to be using Ninja as a build system behind the scenes. Let's wait for it to configure. You see, the build files have been generated in this folder and we can hit build to build. The build is good. You see, exit code is zero. We can run the application and now our application has been built using the Clang compiler using C20 modules and CMake. And again, I have to make sure that you have to use a CMake 328. If you don't have it, C20 modules are not going to be supported. And you can check which version you have installed by doing CMake version. And you see that I am using 328.1, which is the latest version at the time when I am recording this video here. So we have our project working. Let's try to build it on Linux. So I am going to open my Linux thing here. So let's open my Linux box. And I am going to navigate to a folder where I have this project using C20 modules. So let's open it up. It is the same project I have shown you here. We are just going to try and build this on Linux. And please take a look at the CMake preset file I have here. So we are going to be building this on Linux. And this is the preset we will be using. It is going to be using Clang 17. If you don't have at least Clang 17 installed on your Linux box, go in your search engine and search how to install it. This is really easy to find these days. You will see instructions on how to do that. You see that I have even used many of these links myself here. They are highlighted. So I have Clang installed on this system. If I open a terminal window, so let's view terminal and say Clang 17 clang 17 dash dash version it is going to tell me the version you see it is stored in my user bin directory so i have access to it but you also have to install ninja so if i do ninja version it is going to tell me that i have 111.1 and again you can search in your search engine to see how to install this on whatever distribution that you are using once you have these requirements, CMake 28 and Ninja at least 111, you can do the usual. You can select a configure preset. Let's use the status bar this time. We will be selecting Linux base and it is going to pick a build preset by default. It is going to be picking up clean build, but we can also do verbose build because we can. So let's wait for the files to be generated in our build folder. They are. Now we can run the application and you see the output here. Again, if you want to learn more about modules, be sure to read the documentation on CMake. Be sure to read this blog post. You can read the reference at CPP reference or you can even use my C20 masterclass and read the chapter on modules. And we go into the details of how you even build on the terminal, calling the compilers manually, which is really going to give you an insight into how this entire C20 modules thing works. This is all I had to share in this video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I am going to stop here, and I will see you next time.